Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you five tips to become massively productive. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this. I release them every week. Hey everybody, Dan Henry here, author of the Wall Street Journal bestselling book, Digital Millionaire Secrets, and founder of GetClients.com. And today, I'm gonna go over five tips to become massively productive. If you want to grow your business, productivity is absolutely a key skill you must master. You can't achieve great things if you can't get things done. So I'm gonna go over five tips. By the way, on a scale of one to 10, let me know where your productivity is, where you would grade your personal productivity on a scale of one to 10, Drop that number in the comments. I would love to know. All right, so you wanna be more productive. And believe me, I understand that. Nothing hurts more than when you have great ideas, big plans, and you know, you're trying to execute them, but the end of the day comes, and you know, you're thinking you're gonna get all this stuff done. Here's the end of the day, it's time to get ready for bed, and you haven't got it done. And so you lay awake in bed thinking, oh man, I haven't got any of this stuff done. So now, because you're thinking about how unproductive you were, you don't get good sleep, you can't go to sleep, and so the next morning you get up, you're tired, and then your productivity suffers for the rest of the day. It, I, it's a never-ending loop, I get it, it's terrible. I'm gonna help you fix it today. So, let's go over five tips to become massively productive. Now, there are a lot more than just five, but I'm gonna share five with you today that I think you can implement right now. So, the number one absolute biggest tip I have is to monitor sleep, okay? And I don't just mean think about how you feel when you get up in the morning, I mean actively monitor it. So, there are some iPhone apps that you can use to monitor sleep, that'll listen to your breathing and whatnot like that, and that, that's great. But one of the best ways to do it is to use an actual device. So for instance, I have what's called an Aura Ring. Now, I believe a Fitbit or some other type of watch things can, can do this, but my personal favorite is an Aura Ring, and it has these sensors inside of it. It's a plastic, a hard plastic ring, and it has like a circuit board inside of it and it'll track my heart rate, my sleep, my REM sleep, my deep sleep. In fact, uh, I'll grab my phone here in a second and I'll show you uh, exactly what it looks like. So what happens is via Bluetooth, the ring connects to this app and it'll give you uh, some amazing data, like it'll give you your overall readiness score. I scored an 87, anything above 80 is great. Um, a sleep score, activity score. So you can actually go into your readiness and you can see uh, and you see here, I, I hit almost all my goals uh, for this day. Uh, it'll give you your heart rate variability, your, your resting heart rate, and what the, the most important aspect is the sleep uh, analytics and data. So I was in bed for eight hours and 16 minutes. I got seven hours and 23 minutes of sleep. I had 89% efficiency. I got uh, uh, you know, plenty of REM sleep, plenty of deep sleep and I fell right asleep. This was my, when I you know, subconsciously awoke during the night. It just gives you all kinds of amazing data, including how many steps you get in. So I got 15,000 steps in yesterday. Today so far I've got 5,900 steps and it tracks your activity, your daily movement, all kinds of amazing data. All right, now why is this data important? Well, it's simple. If you get better sleep, you will perform better in terms of productivity, growing your company, making good decisions. You grow great companies by making great decisions. You can't make great decisions if you have bad sleep. You just can't, all right? So one thing that has really grown my company over the past year has me really, really focusing. I've been really focusing on monitoring my sleep. And so when I look at this data, I can go, okay, I ate late, my numbers suffered. And I'll see that two or three times. I, okay, I don't wanna eat late. Or I, if I drink alcohol, which this is why I don't drink a lot of alcohol, uh, I'll see that the numbers suffer. 
or if I didn't get enough steps in the day before, it's harder to fall asleep. And I know that because I go, man, it was hard to fall asleep tonight. And it was hard to fall asleep on Monday night. And so I look at my app and I go, wait a minute, here's a similarity. On Monday and on this day, I didn't get enough steps in. And so I need to increase my step. And I start doing little experiments and I figure out how to get better at sleep. And the, the, you know, I, I was in a mastermind a couple of years ago with a bunch of eight-figure entrepreneurs, and you'd think we would be talking about advertising and marketing, but we weren't. We spent about three hours talking about sleep. Okay, it's insane how sleep can really help grow your business. So you want to monitor sleep, and you want to focus on your lifestyle and make changes to get the maximum, not just amount of sleep, but quality of sleep. You will feel so much better if you do this. All right, so the next thing after sleep is 10,000 steps. What does that mean? Well, right now I'm stepping, right? I'm walking up, I'm walking back, I walk to the bathroom, I walk out of bed to get a cup of coffee. Those are steps. Now, if you sit at a desk, and especially if you spend a lot of time at home like many of us are, you're not gonna get a lot of steps in. I get anywhere from two to 3,000 steps in if I don't actively try to take steps. And so you want to get 10,000 in, 10,000 steps. Now why do you want to get exactly 10,000 steps in? Well, there's a couple reasons. When you get this many steps in, because guys, it doesn't matter if you're taking a walk or if you're walking to the bathroom, the steps count. When you get 10,000 steps in, not only does it bring your activity levels up so that you can sleep better because if you don't get enough activity in during the day, you don't sleep well. Like think about this, have you ever had a day where you worked really hard or you were outside all day or you went out on the boat or you just had a lot of activity and at the end of the day you're like, oh, I'm so exhausted, right? It is easy to fall asleep, right? Now I'm not saying that you need to get that much activity in every day where every night you're like, because then you'll overwork yourself. But you gotta get in enough activity in order to make it yourself easy to sleep. Plus, if you get 10,000 steps in per day, you will find that losing weight and staying in shape is actually a lot easier than you would imagine. That slow calorie burn of getting 10,000 steps in really will help you down in the gut area, okay? And nothing is better than feeling good, looking good. Believe it or not, that does affect productivity. All right? If I'm constantly sitting there looking in the mirror saying, oh, I, you know, I really need to lose more weight. Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm overweight. I don't like my body. Well, then I'm worrying about my body and not about my business, right? So if I get in shape and I go, oh, I look, I look good, I don't worry about my body anymore. I worry about my business, all right? So there's nothing wrong with getting healthy, losing weight, and staying in shape. It does help productivity. So you want to get 10 thousand steps in. Now how I get 10,000 steps in is every single morning I take about a 45 minute to a one hour walk and I get about 8,000 steps in and I track it and when I hit 8,000 steps I just coordinate it where I, I almost walk back home you know right like I'll walk and I'll get about you know 4,500 steps and then I'll turn around and I'll walk back boom 8,000 steps because I know for the rest of the day I'll get about 2,000 steps in that's 10,000 steps. And so while I'm walking, I put in my AirPods and I listen to an audiobook. And I increase my knowledge. I increase the amount of, you know, you know what they say, the more you learn, the more you earn. So I listen to business books, I listen to personal development books, and I learn while I'm not only getting my 10,000 steps in to get better sleep, but I'm losing weight, I'm feeling good. And when you get 10,000 steps in in the morning, or at least like eight, you know, seven or 8,000 in, you really, it really gets your metabolism going and it makes you feel good for the rest of the day and you become more productive plus you learn stuff. So that is the second thing, is to get in 10,000 steps and I like doing it with my morning productivity walk uh, and I've been doing that actually for a little bit now and it, it really truly has helped. All right, so what is the third thing? The third thing is to plan tomorrow, today. And I never really took this seriously. I heard a lot of my peers, uh, I've heard you know, friends of mine like Myron Golden and Sam Ovens and, and people like that talk about planning tomorrow, today. And so I actually sat down 
and I took this little notebook, and it was just like this little sort of like blank sort of planner, right? And I, the night before, I started writing down what I had to do the next day. Because what happens is when you get up in the morning and you start thinking about what you're going to do for the day, you know, oh, you got to brush your teeth, you got to get your coffee, you got to do, and you don't really think about what you got to do. And so you don't have a blueprint, right? How can you build an engine without a blueprint? How can you go and find treasure without a map? So in the morning, when I'm trying to get that all together, I do a sloppy job of creating that blueprint, or I do a sloppy job of creating that map for the day, and so I'm not productive. So by taking the time the night before and writing down everything I need to do, I, I'm more productive the next day. And I remember listening to a, one of the sharks on Shark Tank talk about how uh, she would categorize her priority list by A, B, C. So the stuff that she absolutely had to get done that next day, like totally 100% had to happen, she'd write an A next to it. The stuff that it would be really nice if she got done, but not necessarily crucial, she'd write a B. And then the stuff that she'd like to get done if she has the time, but it's really not that big of a deal, whatever, she wrote a C, A, B, C. And so she would write down the night before A, B, C tasks, and then the next day, she'd, she'd make sure to mark off the A's, and then if she got to the B's, she'd mark them off. And then if she got to the C's, great. But whatever was left, she'd move it over to the next day until eventually those B's and C's did get done when there was time, but the A's always got done, the most important things. And so I thought, wow, that's an amazing, um, that's a really amazing way to be productive. And I thought, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of having to write down this graph and uh, of, of my stuff and A, B, and C. It would be cool if I had a planner that you know had the A, B, and had all that, and I could just fill it in. And so I actually made my own design for a planner and printed some. Uh, I printed like ten copies of my own planner, uh, and and I made my own personal planner design, and I've used it every day, and it's massively increased my productivity. And I don't like using other planners because. They're way too complicated. I mean, I bought a few planners off of Amazon, and it was literally, literally like you had to have an astrophysics degree or watch a, a frickin' course to be able to use the planner. And to me, that's not being productive. So I created a planner that didn't have all the, you know, write down your th gratitude and all this and blah, 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 and, you know, all this, you know, just tons of messy stuff. I didn't. Blah, just get away. I made a simple planner, ABC, and it's really, really helped me. And um, uh, that's my personal planner. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll release it as a product. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, so that is planning tomorrow today. That's the third one. All right, so the fourth one is you want to turn your phone into a skeleton phone. And I remember talking to a friend of mine on the phone, Derek Halpern. And Derek's a good friend of mine. We, we have uh, chit chats probably once a month and we talk business and life and uh, we talk kids. I had my, my son Bruce before he had his and so we talk about our kids a lot. And one thing we talked about was uh, productivity. And I remember Derek was actually the person that introduced me to Sam Ovens. And I, I didn't really care to meet Sam. I just I, I don't like go out trying to meet people. Uh, but what made me want to meet him was one screenshot he sent me. Derek goes, I met Sam, and this guy bl blows my mind how like committed he is to productivity. Uh, take a look at this, and he sends me a picture of Sam holding his cell phone, and there was like two apps on it, and everything else was blank, and. Derek goes, this guy is like seriously into productivity. This is how many apps he has on his phone. And I saw that picture and I just thought that was like the most genius thing because think about it. What really kills your productivity? You grab your phone and Facebook pops up or this or that pops up or your email or whatever, right? And it's just so much crap happening at once. Just so much stuff just flying past your brain. How can you be productive with a smartphone with all that stuff on it? So I decided to create a skeleton phone. And what a skeleton phone is, is you take all the meat and, 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 and all the, the, the flesh and you strip it down to the bare bones, right? You've heard of skeleton crew, well this is a skeleton phone. 
you put on your phone only what you need, which means no Facebook, no Instagram, no email. Guys, I, first of all, I haven't read my email in three years. My assistant reads my email, so there's no reason for me to have my email on my phone. And if I did read my email, I would set aside a block of time every day to read that email. I wouldn't just read it randomly and get distracted. Because when you're focused on something and you get distracted, it takes 20 to 30 minutes to refocus. And by that time, your phone gives you another distraction. So for me, I only put on my phone what I absolutely need, like maps, or unfortunately, I do have to have Instagram on my phone because that's the only way I can post stories and lives and things like that but I turn off the notifications so that the only time I use Instagram is when I need to go live. And oftentimes, uh, you'll find that if you do that, you'll still get distracted because you know, you'll have, that, you'll have that, that urge to do it. So if you're that type of person where if it's there, you'll have the urge to do it, buy a second phone and have a play phone and a work phone. And your play phone, you get when you're done for the day and you can go on Instagram and like all the cat pictures you want, but during the day when you're working, you have a phone with literally the bare essential. Like really the main app I have on my phone is Slack because that what is what allows me to communicate with my team. And so you wanna create a phone that has almost no apps on it so that you have no distractions. So that's, that's the fourth thing is the skeleton phone. The fifth thing, which is probably the most important, is to do less. It's to do less. Now what does that mean? Doing less, and I wish I could turn this, this fifth point here into solid gold, because doing less is literally a concept that changed my life. Steve Jobs said that focus is not about choosing what to do with your time. It's about choosing what not to do. And so what I like to do is I like to look at my goals and I like to really think, what do I need to do to accomplish this, right? I, I remember I used to own a bar in Spring Hill, Florida. And my staff would come to me all the time with suggestions, right? And they'd say, Dan, we should put a TV there. We should do this there. We should do this there. We should change this. We should change that. And whenever, and some of these ideas were great, but when I got these ideas, I would say to myself, I would say, will this idea pour more liquor into glasses and increase the revenue of the bar, or will it just look cool? And so I started choosing to do only things that would increase revenue and not things that were just busy work. And my bar grew way faster, and we ended up selling that bar for a six-figure profit in a town where pretty much nobody had a successful bar at all. And it's because I focused. And so doing less actually gets you more. In fact, ever since I deleted 90% of my funnel, I focused on one traffic source until it was mastered and delegated to my team, then focused on a new one, mastered and delegated to my team, then focused on something else. I did one thing at a time, I did less, that's when my company grew more. And if you've ever heard me talk about the circle of focus, that is a systematic way to do less and get more output. And I'll do another YouTube video coming up on the circle of focus and how to use that system to get more done while doing less. But for now, just ask yourself, does this need to be done? For instance, if you have two businesses, ask yourself, do I really need two businesses? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if one of those businesses isn't massively successful, you have zero business creating a second business. Because if you can't make one business successful, what makes you think you can make a second business successful? Pick the one that you have the most progress with or you are the most passionate about, stick with that and get rid of the other business, period, okay? Do less and you will get more. You're never gonna achieve great things by doing two things and giving 50% effort to each, or doing four things and giving 25% effort to each, or doing 10 things and giving 10% effort to each. You're gonna achieve great things by doing one thing, giving 100% effort, and then moving on to the next thing, one thing at a time. So, you wanna be more productive? Clear your plate, do less. Ask if it actually has to be done. So to summarize, monitor your sleep, get better sleep, 
get 10,000 steps in a day, plan them hard a day, delete stuff from your phone, create a skeleton phone, and do less so that you can achieve more. If you'd like to learn more about the circle of focus, productivity, and the mindset to get stuff done, I cover that in my book. It's in the chapter called How to Develop Mind Control pa Powers. You can get this book free. And yes, it is a USA Today, Wall Street, and Wall Street Journal bestseller. Sorry, that's, it just hit the list. It's kind of new for me, so I keep mentioning it. You know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> but anyway, even though it is a bestseller, I'm gonna give you this book for free. All you have to do is cover shipping, pay the postman, and I will cover the cost of the book. I'll send you out a copy for free. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Why? Because you're gonna get more videos like this each and every week because I release them each and every week, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk soon.